he's gonna he's like a he's like a Robin Hood looking guy, so he's gonna be kinda in green. You know, the alternate ending to the Kevin Costner movie where he didn't quite beat Alan Rickman. Hello and uh, welcome back to another colorful edition of I'm Awful and You Can Be Too. Uh, this week's going to be kind of short since last week was really long. Uh, I'm just going to color. Uh, as I'm sure many artists can, can attest, when it rains it pours and I am often just completely f***ing inundated with projects all at once. So uh, I'm going to show you guys today my whoa, uh, very quick way of coloring um, I'm not proud of it. It's certainly not acceptable, but uh, it, it does get the job done and it, it, it sells. Uh, so it's a very quick process, um, able to work very quickly. Again, I've sped up the, uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna do it from now on. I'm just gonna speed up the, uh, the video. That way, you know, you aren't having to watch me agonize in real time. It's, you know, more convenient to watch. I think people enjoy that. So uh, anyway, I'm just kind of uh, coloring in this uh, unfortunate fella who's about to get the old chop. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'll show you, uh, I'm basically laying in the flats and then I'll show you my, my quick process uh, for coloring. Um, as far as color choice goes, I, I try to stick to, um, what are they called, secondary pairings? I don't know, there's, uh, you know, I'm hanging out in the blue section of that color wheel and then I'll jump across and hang out in the browns and uh, keep that going. You know, I'll stray a little bit where necessary, but like for this, this straw, I want to be attention grabbing this crazy straw. So it's going to be nice and yellow. I don't know why I'm coloring it first since it's, I should color the bigger spaces, but I'm an idiot. So I guarantee I'll be coloring into that yellow on accident and having to fix it later. I'll uh, get the ground in here real quick. Um, yeah, not very, not very precise, not very exacting, just sort of quick and dirty. Because I got a lot to do. There, I'm working on about three projects at once, which is never a good idea. I, I don't know why it happens to me, um, but it, it is, it, that's what's going on. So I'm gonna grab a darker color and start filling in the uh, shadowy areas few little dots to add, you know, granular sort of appeal of dirt. This sort of weird block here, I'm gonna fill in real quick. I didn't like that, so I'm gonna go with a nice lighter shade. That's a little too much like the straw now. How will he get out of this mess? I like how I stated my, my color theory and then immediately broke it with these yellows. Whoops. Again, um, usually I lay in the flats and a little bit of, uh, shade, you know, just darker values. It's all additive. Uh, right now, for some reason, I exported this like an idiot. Um, and I have I have two layers uh, that I merged. And then when I exported them, they flattened with the back layer. And I had done like 35 of them. So I'm very much stuck with a lot of whites. So Usually I try to have the lines on top and then color underneath it on the, the layers below it. But this time, since I was a fool, I'm gonna have to use uh, the multiply feature and color on top, which, you know, gets interesting as you, you know, move on and start having multiple layers at play, you know, cause the color layers multiply on top of each other instead of laying on top. That was a big dumb dumb and I'm paying for it. But yeah, I'm gonna color a couple couple little quick drawings here today uh, to show you my process quickly and then you, you guys can take it home if you like or you know variations improve upon it but the, the thought process is essentially you color in all your flats and then on top of it you'll start using overlay layers for shades um, for shadowy areas and highlighted areas so just a three-step process basically I don't know if that's a stump 
or if it's like a a weird wooden block. It's too similar. With like a ragged old sheet on top. I haven't really thought about that out. What is what that is? Uh, there's obviously a, a, a barrel of decapitated heads, so I'm I'm gonna have to take that into account. This isn't that. This guy's uh, first of the day. I've been drawn a lot of mugs. I find my like. I've been drawing fantasy pretty much nonstop, as I'm sure you guys have noticed. Aside from that Star Wars episode, I've been pretty much stuck in the fantasy realm, which is weird because I'm not a huge fantasy guy. Like, I like Lord of the Rings as much as the next guy, but I've played D and D maybe twice in my life, and yeah, I'm yeah, more of a Mass Effect person than a than a Dragon Age person, so. It's been kind of been kind of draining because everything I've been drawing has been in the same universe and trying to keep every character unique and not kind of you know rote. I don't know how well I'm doing. You guys can let me know. Uh, if I, some shameless cross promotion of myself, uh, if you want to follow me, I'll put links this time. Uh, I sometimes post stuff to Twitter, uh, not very frequently because I'm just not very good at social media. Not very, I'm not very good at anything um but i am doing a much better job on my facebook page so if you guys want to follow me over there the the scribbles of clancy is what you can look it up under um i post the videos there and uh i also am a, a vain piece of shit when it comes to instagram so that's another place you can check it out so we are almost done with uh the flats here nice little fill bucket I still do the outline trace because I don't trust it. When, when, whenever you use it to fill all the way, like do the double click, you know, fill in a perimeter, fill it in, and then do it again, it, it'll always make jaggies on the outside. And I haven't really figured out a way to fix that. So you'll see, I'll do it here again. Duke, there you go. And then I'll, I'll manually fill in that little, the, the nether area betwixt them. Betwixt them. All right, let's see here. I seem to be having a heart attack. I seem to have stopped for some reason. I have an aneurysm. What's happening? Did I die? Okay, I'm back. All right. Again, with just uh, mid-tones, light shades, texture lines, go across the top there. So there we go, looking good. New layer. Ooh, we're gonna make some blood, actually. Let's do, let's do some effects stuff. Let's have fun. We'll have our dessert before dinner. Smear again. I'm just grabbing a bush pretty much at random. I have no idea what they do, but this is uh, looking fun This blood's gonna be much more complex than anything else going on in this painting <laughs> but, Yeah, just a little drips little drizzles, you know everyone makes mistakes All things considering I mean he's, he's murdered this is his third person of the day and he's managed to keep a pretty clean workspace So props to this guy um Consummate professional with the head chopping. It doesn't. It does. It probably doesn't match aesthetically because it's so painterly, whereas everything else is so basic. I probably should have outlined all this blood with a black line just to keep it consistent. But I can't be bothered. I'm, I'm cruising. I got a deadline, Holmes. I only got about 150 of these things to do before I can uh, retire from life and go live in a cabin somewhere. Some light highlights on the blood there. This is sort of a microcosm of the rest of it. I mean, I'm, I'm using the same process to all of these, so. All right, so now I am going in with the highlights. I've created a new layer, and I am just um, judiciously, judiciously um, applying highlights to this thing wherever I feel like they're appropriate. A um, little bit on the hair. Um, I guess I've decided the light is coming off to the top right. Um, maybe it's afternoon. He's fortunate, he has it. The other guys were, were killed before lunch, so they didn't get to have chicken wings. Just a little bit of gore in the bucket. The ground needs some attention. I'm hoping this, I mean, all I really want you folks to get out of this is that if, you see how quickly and, and, and hastily and awfully I'm doing this, uh, it, there's only room for improvement. Uh, <laughs> if you spend a longer period of time, you know, choosing your lines, you'll have a great time with this. But this is a very quick, quick and dirty way to get some good values on your characters. Cross hatching there. Overlaid it, see there you go, whoa! So simple, that's so easy. Now I'm going in and I just grab a darker shade of gray. Uh, you know, I, I used white 
and you use the overlay feature. And for this, I'm using uh, like a, just a darker shade of gray. It doesn't really need to be much, actually, because you could always duplicate the layer once you're done. But just adding the uh, shadows where I've, I feel like they're appropriate. Um, you know, the folds of this cl cloth, the, the underside of the ax, um, anywhere the light doesn't touch Simba. So our obligatory Lion King reference. Forgot to shade in that area. I probably should have added a, another layer or, you know, done a different color for the inside of the robe, for the inside of the sleeve, but I'm, uh, I'm cruising. I'm just cruising way too fast for that. Cannot be bothered. I did add a highlight layer uh, when back when I was coloring that mug, just for the wood grain of the mug, not for the bucket, because uh, apparently I don't, I don't give a shit about buckets. Just, just the mugs. I, I got my head in the right place. I'm all about that alcohol. If it's wooden and doesn't contain an inebriating beverage, I'm not interested in giving you wood grain. So just shove off. In real time, I'm guessing this probably takes about 25 minutes. This is sort of a more involved piece. A, a big problem I have is since I don't like backgrounds, uh, I just kind of had to choose how the ground trails off. I think I kind of like how this one looks. Um, you know, it's obvious where it is, but it doesn't need to keep going. All right, moving on. Uh, this next one, uh, this is another mug, as you can see. So some detail on the mug. The name of this card is Cure for What Ails. Because yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a, a mug of, of ale. So I, I'm probably gonna invest a little bit more time in the wood grain this time around. Um, you know, try not to reuse the same two or three colors on an object. That's another thing I do to save a lot of time is I'll choose a color palette of about three different colors and I'll, you know, create an entire item out of that. When it's something as simple as one thing, I can, uh, you know, break that mold a little bit. Fill this in, gonna go get this colored in. I don't know if that's a stamp or if it's burned in. Um, I'm gonna go with some sort of adhesive, you know, the, the, those adhesive things they had back in the old days, you know, with the knights. Uh, they, they had staples back then, and they could go buy custom-made laser-cut stamps, I'm sure. God, I'm an idiot. Okay, uh, yeah, I probably should be extending these, uh, the wood grain effect into the, into that cross. That's a pencil, I don't want the pencil. Um, but I'm not going to, because that would require attention to detail and care, and I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. It's gonna be great when I when I try to you know sell this product and then everyone can go on YouTube and just see how quick and dirty and, and how many shits I didn't give and it will uh, completely undercut the entire the entire reason for doing it you know that that's cool going ahead I just went ahead and I'm a, I'm doing the uh, why am I doing this I think I messed up I forgot to make a new layer I just started going or maybe I thought overlay would work on both. So you're about to see me mess up big time. I think I'm, and I'm gonna go to overlay and, oh, that doesn't look right. The, this is where I make a discovery. Ah, shit, I say. That sucks. But then there's a way to fix that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab just this layer. And I'm gonna grab the darker values. And over here you can select, you know, that's the same as the contiguous and non-contiguous, non-contiguous, I don't know. Anyway, I duplicated it. So now I have an overlay layer and a multiply layer and look at how how, how ornate that is. Look at that, that's, that's amazing. Look at me go. Last up, uh, this one is hit me with your best shot. Um, yeah, it's, uh, he's getting smacked in the face. Again, I have a character whose definition kind of just ends at the end of the frame. It looks good in the cards when I'm laying it out, but it is always kind of weird on how I end that. This guy's getting just pummeled in the face. Three values on the eyes, because why not? I'm gonna do something kind of silly with this mug. I'm gonna rough in where I think the rest of his face goes as it's being concaved by a flying glass. I'm gonna fill this in. This is the back layer of the glass, and I'm decreasing the opacity, you know? I'm gonna do like a four-step process just to show you how I, when I really give a crap, this is how I do glassware. Um, I just kind of break it down into the layers. So, you know, you have the, the base layer, a little bit darker for that stuff, and then the fluid is on the inside. So that's sandwiched between 
like two glass layers. So suddenly you're like that. The trick becomes figuring out where you start doing your overlays and your complexity. That's the pencil again. I keep accidentally choosing the pencil. So this is the foreground glass. It's closer, it's sandwiching in the, uh, the liquid. So I'm bringing that down, coloring his mouth a little bit. His lips should be a different color than the rest of his face. So let's, that's doing some chest hair. You see sort of a brutish character getting knocked in the fucking face. Um, some pox, that looks a bit too big. But we'll let it live. Just some uh, some freckles, some imperfections in the skin. He needs to see his uh, dermatologist. There, I cleaned up that line. I'm gonna go in and color in the highlights now for the overlay layer. That's too many dots. Nope. Okay, we'll let it live. On the inside, the water, the, well not water, it's, I don't know what kind of liquid that is. Is it a shot of piss? That would be, that'd be worse. No, 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 Fuck. no, move on, avoid it. Nice. Go clean up his, give him some lips. He's a male character, so I can go ahead and, you know, I have more freedom making him look just oafish and dumb. Um, because I'm a man, and I, I feel comfortable making myself look like an idiot. Or other men that I draw. Is he a man, though? Maybe he's just a man-child. Maybe he doesn't have the emotional maturity to be able to consider a man. Maybe that's why he's getting hit in the face. He's just getting peltered by glassware, because he, uh... You know, I bet you politics came up. That's probably what happened. I know I've been pretty insufferable this season, so... Why... why we'll do this. There it is. Aha! Again with the overlay layers, here we go. Nice, just filling that in. Oh, I wanna go multiply, my bad. Take this whole tutorial, and if I say overlay, I could also just as easily mean multiply, depending on what I'm doing. Darks are multiplied, lights are overlay. So, keep that in mind. All right, that's all we got for today. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you guys later. See you.